Good evening. Good evening. Hi. We know Omar won't be here this evening. Omar Butler has um, a conflict this evening. Evening, everyone. Evening. Hi. Hi. Yes, Mr. Omar. So we do have an anonymous attendee. I'm um, thinking of the last incident that we had. And so if we could keep a close watch and make sure that this isn't an inappropriate um, attendee. And Ms. Forrest, could we make um, Lauren Collingwood a panelist as well? He has a report. And we have an... Um, Adam Lechner that is wondering why he cannot turn his camera on. I think that would be because uh, the cameras are on only for those who are panelists as opposed to, uh, to uh, attendees. Ah.
And just just to be clear, so everyone understands, the panelists um, for this meeting are the commission members and the staff of the commission, um, including legal counsel, the demographer, translator, and our uh, district help with running the entire meeting. So, fantastic. All right. It is 636. So I am going to call the meeting to order as I just noticed that Commissioner Tolu is now joining us. Um, I did want to alert everybody that Commissioner um, Butler did write an email today. He has a conflict this, out, this evening with work and he won't be able to attend. Um, I am hoping that um, Commissioner uh, Diana Noriega Diaz will be joining us um, momentarily, and we will reflect that at that time when she joins us. So at this time, at 637, I am going to call the meeting to order. And uh, Ms. Forrest, would you please uh, do the roll call to make sure that we do have a quorum present? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Butler, absent. Commissioner Diaz Noriega, absent. De uh, Commissioner Tolu, present. Commissioner Hilliard, present. Commission Chair Gordon, present. Commissioner Lazaretti, present. We do have a quorum, so we will move on to item three, the approval of our agenda. Are there any changes this evening from commissioners or from um, Mr. Pitts? Seeing none, I will move, I will open it up for move for approval of agenda. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the agenda. I second. I have a motion from Commissioner Lazaretti with a second from Commissioner Hilliard. Um, all, in, all in favor, can we do a roll call? Yes. Um, Commissioner Butler, absent. Uh, Commissioner Diaz Noriega, absent. Commissioner Tolu? Yay. Commissioner Hilliard? Yes. Commission Chair Gordon? Yes. Commissioner Lazaretti? Yes. Moving on to item four, we have approval of the October 12th, 2012, 2021 minutes. Are there any amendments to the amendments, to the minutes this evening from commissioners, Mr. Pitts? Seeing none, um, I will ask it. Do we ask for um, public comment on our agenda, on our minutes, Mr. Pitts? Um, I don't think we, no, I don't. In okay. fact, I think that there could be an issue with changing the agenda in response. Fantastic. So I will entertain a motion for approval of our October 12 minutes. I move for approval of the minutes. I'll second them. So we have a motion from Commissioner Hilliard with a second from Commissioner Gordon. Roll call vote, please. Uh, Commissioner Butler, absent. Commissioner Diaz Noriega, absent. Commissioner Tolu, yay. Commissioner Hilliard, yes. Com Commission Chair Gordon, yes. Commissioner Lazaretti, yes. And the minutes are approved unanimously. Moving on to item five is our public comment portion. Um, these are um, items not already on our agenda. If there is an item you wish to speak to that is on our agenda, we do ask that you wait for that item to <clears throat> before speaking. You are allowed three minutes. And these are also items that are under our jurisdiction, if you please. Do we have any public comment at this time, Ms. Forrest? Um, no public comment. 
well, it appears that we have someone who is maybe having trouble with their hand. Uh, Linda Dries Lazito. Please unmute. Okay. Um, good evening, commissioners. Thank you again for volunteering. Um, I guess I'm concerned, but there is um, an, on the agenda about the trustee area to representation. And I'm wondering, since we've um, lost, <laughs> um, lost people on this commission, is it possible, and maybe it's written down somewhere, to have like an alternate that can also kind of follow in the background and step in and if someone resigns or falls through. Anyway, so that's all I want to say. I'm just concerned um, that some of the areas that are the most underrepresented aren't having representation on this commission. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Mr. Pitts, do we want to um, clarify the process? Actually, we are going to be talking about that item later on our agenda. So why don't we wait since it is agendized to address those concerns? Um, are there any other public comments this evening? No more public comment. Moving on to um, item six. This is our discussion and possible action items. Item 6A is adoption of the schedule for public outreach and our meetings. Mr. Pitts, did you wanna start with this? Certainly, I'm happy to do so. Um, so I have uh, attached to the agenda um, a draft uh, uh, calendar uh, for the commission to consider merely really as a starting point about uh, the dates of the five public outreach meetings that need to occur uh, in advance of the adoption of a preliminary plan um, by the district. Um, so as set forth, as you will see here, the idea for the uh, schedule in terms of the dates um, would be continuing on Tuesdays at 6.30, consistent with the existing schedule for meetings, although in order to have the five meetings by the time uh, that we need to uh, in advance of the December 14th date where we hope the commission uh, has tentatively said it hopes to adopt a uh, preliminary plan, um, we can't, we'll have to go beyond every other week um, at that point, but uh, hopefully uh, this time reasonably works for people or at least that, that was the idea, um, although that can obviously be changed. Um, and the locations, I, I attempted to court to ensure that they were at the primary comprehensive high school located in each trustee area. Um, and you'll see that with respect to trustee area one, um, which unfortunately Mr. Butler can't be here tonight, um, who is the trustee I believe for that area, but um, there are two different high schools located in that trustee area. So we'll have to make a decision about which of those two high schools is the better location. Um, and the idea for the meetings would be that, that they would be sort of hybrid meetings that would occur both over Zoom and, and with some means for public participation at a physical location at the high school. Um, and I've already spoken with the district about the viability of, of that approach and they, uh, say that the, it will work and that they will reach out to the appropriate principles as soon as uh, there is a set of dates in place. Um, and we've also spoken about, um, about the public outre outreach aspect of this, which uh, obviously is something we've continued to think about, but utilizing the district's resources in that and as soon as we've um, come up with a schedule for the meetings. Um, so as I said, uh, beyond, um, Beyond that, there wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason with respect to the ordering of the particular meetings. Um, I thought that um, we could 
I, I moved the area two meeting to the end uh, simply because of the existing vacancy with respect to area two. So I thought it made sense to do that one um, last to, to make the greatest possible chance that we will have someone in that place uh, by that time and who can help with the outreach aspects. Um, but other than that, um, there's not much to present. That's the thought that went into this. Um, and I present it for the commissioners to consider or revise uh, as they believe appropriate. Excellent. Do we have questions or comments from um, commissioners this evening? I have a, a couple of questions I can start off with. Um, the first is that I've been um, observing the, um, the um, county supervisors redistricting process. And they have been having their meetings almost um, actually one after another right now. They had one on Saturday. They had one on Sunday. They have a joint meeting this evening um, that I wasn't able to attend because of our own meeting. Um, but what I'm noticing is that they are um, putting it in areas and they are allowing whatever supervisors are in that area to attend and then whoever else can make it. And I guess my question this evening is, is are these meetings, do we need to have a quorum do, or can we have as many uh, uh, commissioners as are available attend and um, are we, will we recording them and can commissioners go back and review the meetings if they are unable to attend in person? Sorry, <laughs> a lot of questions. It, it, was, it started getting me thinking, so. So I, I certainly hope that um, we'll be able to record the meetings um, to sort of start at the end. I mean, I think part of the, the benefit of using the Zoom means is that we'll have a means of recording the meetings and knowing and, and an ability for any commissioners who can't make it um, to be to review the meetings that way after after the meeting has occurred um, with respect to um, the location requirements. I mean, I think my I, I will I need to finalize a a review of this of the legal question, um, but my hope is that we can um, continue to use the Zoom meeting to satisfy the quorum requirements instead of require and conduct it as a as a Zoom meeting, um, even though you know, albeit with one or more of the commissioners potentially in a, in the same location at the time. Um, that seems to me to be the simplest way to ensure that everyone is. Um, able to participate um, under the circumstances and with an understanding that that it may not be the case that everyone is that we can ensure you know that four commissioners are always um, in the particular location for each of these meetings but we will we'll need a quorum of the of the commission in order to hold the uh, community input I think so. I, I think so, but let me. I, I will. Let's, let's I will. check on that because the supervisors did not use a quorum of okay. theirs. So I just was wondering if the import, input, input part. Um, is it, it may be that it varies. I mean, I that this schedule is proposed to correspond to some dates that we've set for the commission's meeting. Um, so you know, it may be that we will want a quorum. For, uh, to conduct other business, uh, commission business at the same time. Um, but it may be that for ones that are not going to be, that, that won't involve that um, degree of commission work that we, we don't require the quorum. So I, I, will, I will look into that as, as an element once we, once we have a calendar in place. Thank you. Any other question comments from commissioners? Yeah, I have a question regarding the, um... November 23rd tentative date for the meeting in trustee area three at Richmond High. Um, I believe that is Thanksgiving week in the district. And I don't know if the facilities will be open during that week. Um, maybe you've checked into that, but just wanted to bring that to the commission's attention. And I, and I was aware of that. I haven't had a chance to confirm availability yet. I thought given the timing of everything that, you know, we may be, we may have, it may be ideal to do one that week if it's possible, um, if the commissioners, if it's not possible facility wise, or if, if the feeling is that we should do it on some date out of this time, then I think we would just have to pick a different Tuesday, um, a, a day other than Tuesday in which to conduct at least one of those meetings. I think at some point in time, we may have to um, even, it's possible to have one on a Tuesday and a Wednesday or a Monday and a Tuesday. 
those are some of the things I think that we're doing. And I think the more flexibility we at, we allow commissioners in order to attend the meetings, the more successful we'll be with our public outreach meetings. I think this is going to be a, um, a um, difficult part of our, our, of our uh, job to really make sure that we're, um, we're out there and it's, it's um, might conflict with work and family issues. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can be as, as flexible as possible on um, this issue. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? Do we need action on this? Do we need to approve this, this uh, schedule or do we just want to give um, consensus on approval of this of the schedule as, as presented? Do we need to get public comment on this? Or? Yes, yes, thank you. Is there public comment on this issue? Yes, uh, Linda Ruzzi, Ruiz, I'm sorry, Luzito, please unmute yourself. Ms. Ruiz, Luzito. I don't care how you say my name, it's fine. As long as I know you're talking to me, that's fine. Okay, so I was kind of confused about what uh, Mr. Casey Pitt said. So maybe you can clar clarify after I'm done is, I thought he said that there were more than one high school in the trustee areas. And if I look at the map um, in trustee area one, Hercules Panola, you have the, Her you have, um, the Pan oh okay you have Panola Valley High School in Hercules so that's the one okay I didn't see that so those would that must be what he's talking about but all the rest just have one so to have a meeting you'd have to have in there okay never mind I'm confused <laughs> but there's no there's no such thing as a bad question. We're all trying to figure this out as we move forward and we appreciate your participation. Okay, I just do the others, De Anza's area four and Richmond High area three and Kennedy area two and El Cerrito area five. But yeah, there are, there was two distinct cities in Hercules Penal. Okay, never mind. Thank you for your input. Right. Is there other public comment on this one? No more public comment. Is there an action that we need to take, whether it's consensus or voting, Mr. Pitts, or is this just tentative and we're going to move forward? I think if the commission were to uh, potentially approve by consensus this as a planned schedule, I think that would be helpful. I can then communicate with the districts um, with an understanding that, that, that we may need to make modifications. Um, you know, depending on the availability of facilities. Great. So um, showing Ms. Uh, Commissioner Lazaretti. Just a quick thought. Um, Mr. Pitts, when you communicate with the district over the schedule, can you try to impress upon them the importance of uh, communicating to their um, student, to their parent communities and uh, student bodies? Um, you know, through their email chains or whatever, you know, newsletters or whatever, that these meetings are happening and the importance of these meetings. It, it's very important, I think, um, that we get as much public uh, input as possible and public attendance as possible. And my concerns is that, that the, uh, the meetings are not adequately advertised. Um, the turnout will not be very uh, strong or what we are hoping for. And it seems like the principals are going to be the probably the best conduits to their particular communities. It would be great if in whatever district we're holding a meeting that week, uh, all the principals um, could be alerted and communicate um, through their, you know, either email chains or newsletters to, to families that that these are happening and this is, uh, you know, what they're all about to some extent. And maybe Rochelle, maybe uh, the communications office can help them in terms of uh, conveying that to uh, to their communities. And, and so we started, we started having that conversation already um, to 
talk about um, the methods through which we could communicate with the particular school communities within each trust area. So that was uh, in addition to talking about the logistics of facilities, we, we've started that conversation um, and the district has, has, we've started to figure out what resources are available. Um, and then I, and we'll work you know, with the commission to identify the extent to which we need to do, take other efforts beyond what the district itself can do. But, but we have started that conversation and I appreciate the reminder. Thank you. Any other comments from commissioners this evening? So at this time, if I can get consensus on this and uh, this schedule going forward and with the understanding that of course there may need to be, that we may need to have some flexibility in it. Is there, is there a consensus on that? Thumbs up. We've got one, two, three and uh, Commissioner Tulu, you have your hand up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm late uh, to comment on this because uh, when I see uh, for area four the answer, uh, I just it just came to my awareness that actually area four has two high school, middle college also, and. The reason I bring that up, I'm not sure whether in terms of, uh, because the answer I know it is like really, really far. So I'm not sure whether uh, in terms of uh, uh, reachability from the community, you know, it will become a constraint, a challenge for people to attend. Uh, although I am aware that we will have Zoom, but if at middle college, uh, there is a bus stop, actually uh, like a Contra Costa, uh, like uh, bus transit there. So I'm not sure whether middle college is the better option or the answer is the better one. So sorry for that, it's late in the- uh, No, that's an excellent um, catch um, and, I know quite a bit about um, the middle college at uh, Contra Costa Community College. So um, I will be, um, let's, we'll check into that. Mr. Pitts and I can talk about that and um, I'll get some feedback for you. And that may be some of the flexibility that we will need in the schedule in order to uh, change that around. But it's a it's an interesting um, idea, middle college or the, the Contra Costa Community College or Contra Costa College has um, many facilities available and I'm sure they will be happy to accommodate us. And I, I know a few people that um, we can talk to and see if they'll be, um, they'll help us uh, locate a room because that'd be a great option, especially since the community does come there. And one of the things that um, is uh, really uh, worth looking into is because as you said, there is a um, bus stop, there is a, a, a transportation connection area there. So I will look into that and I will get back to you about that. Okay, thank you, thank Commissioner Tulu. And that, that, and just to be clear, that's exactly the kind of information I was hoping we, we you know, the commissioners are best situated to provide, provide that information. So thank you for that. Yeah, that was a great catch. So at this time, so consensus, um, Commissioner Tulu, you were the last thumbs up. So we're gonna go forward with this with the understanding that it will be a flexible schedule and that we will, um, good, we've got consensus for you. Moving on to item C, item B, our update from Collingwood Research, Lauren. Great, uh, pleased to be here. Uh, nice to see everybody. Um, been uh, gathering a lot of data. I'm just going to overview kind of the last uh, two or three weeks or so of what we've been doing. Uh, the first uh, order of business was getting the Maptitude software, redistricting software set up. Uh, we accomplished that this week, uh, early this week. So that's good. It's, um, you know, can take a little while with the downloading and things like that and getting the various um, layers that uh, will be used to um, convey the maps and other points of interest. Uh, after being here today, one thing I 
uh, do need to get that I realized uh, will be a point shape file of all the different um, educational facilities and schools and stuff like that in the district. Uh, that's going to be very important. So uh, I'm going to track that down here in the next day or so. Um, we uh, gathered uh, data from the uh, California redistricting uh, uh, database, which has the adjusted uh, census data for uh, 2021 round of redistricting. Uh, those of you may be familiar, but adjusted makes a slight adjustments to the population in accordance with uh, basically prison population. And so in California, uh, you can't have prison gerrymandering like they do in other states in some places. And so for example, if someone's in Pelican Bay, um, currently they would be accounted for, say if, um, you know, say take Riverside, you know, where I used to live, if that's where their address was, they would be get readjusted to there. So uh, that's uh, the appropriate data source. And so that has the population counts, um, the adjusted population counts. And then I've also gathered the citizen voting age population data uh, that's taken from the 2015, 2019 American Community Survey. So it's, it's a different data source, but both are at the 2020 block level. Uh, and that's gonna be the base layer that we're gonna use to basically draw these districts uh, and get everything squared away. And so uh, you're probably familiar with the citizen voting age population data. But what you'll observe moving forward will be, uh, particularly with the Latino and Asian populations, you'll see a gap between the population count and the citizen voting age population data. Um, and so we set the apportionment, the total number of people per district, the ideal size based on population. And then we draw the districts keeping uh, looking at voting a uh, citizen voting age population with the idea of electing uh, majority minority and creating majority minority seats. So uh, those things are in Mapitude. They're squared away. We have some shape files. Uh, we've been working on organizing Contra Costa County election results from previous years uh, to the uh, correct um, uh, West Contra Costa County School District area. Um, and so we've done that. And we are in the process of taking previous voter files um, uh, if from Contra Costa County, geocoding those uh, voter files for individual locations. Uh, we're going to classify individuals by race based on various algorithms. And then we're going to aggregate that to the block into the precinct. So not only will we be able to assess whether we can draw a majority minority seat for a particular racial population, but we'll then it'll be able to look at what the general turnout is like in different types of elections among those racial uh, groups. And that's not so much a liability angle, but that will be something I think that the commission might be interested in. So that's a bit of an additional step uh, that we're taking that is probably not normal, but I think it was one thing that was appealing to the, uh, to the commission in terms of my application. So I wanted to make sure that we're getting on that uh, right away. So the next step is gonna basically be um, setting up the different districts uh, and creating a couple different plans uh, that we'll you know be presenting uh, to to you all you know uh, early on um, in the next couple of weeks. And then the other thing I wanted to bring up and this this doesn't necessarily have to be done, but it is an option. Um, when we're doing these public meetings, I have made arrangement with some people uh, who work with me um, to for some of the say the principals or some of the different organizations in the area, to basically uh, assign uh, basically accounts for a couple of different groups of people. Um, and they could go in and basically plot out their different communities of interest of different areas they wanna be kept together or not. Uh, because it, that's gonna be important potentially as we get down to kind of, okay, where do we cut the boundary and that kind of thing to make sure that we don't cut right through a couple areas that you know to me look reasonable, but just people on the ground don't. And so that will at least give us, uh, instead of just listening to people say, oh, we want this neighborhood and that neighborhood, but we actually have it in you know, spatial format that can be incorporated. So that's an option. It is more additional work potentially um, uh, for people involved because uh, there is a little bit of specialty, but I'm you know, willing to do that. So uh, anyway, that's about the update that I have for now. If anyone has any questions, you know, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Questions, comments from commissioners? So I have a, I have a couple of questions about the process because I've been watching others 
um, do it. And, and one of the, uh, what the state level did was they, they did um, a plan like we have where they went out into the community and they listened to the community. They didn't present maps at that time and they didn't have us put input on the maps. Um, that is um, a step. However, with the supervisors, the meeting that they had, they presented the, the four or five maps this last time around. And now they're going out with those maps and then they're, show, they're showing the communities all of the maps and the choices and then getting input with that. So is there um, a process that you have in mind in place? I, I really um, do like the option. In fact, someone mentioned it earlier. It might've been um, Mr. Rafferty talking about the ability of people of community to go into the um, map options and to mark on them you know, helping us, um, oh, log out, map um, the community interests. So I think that that's a, an interesting and wonderful uh, possibility. Um, and how would we, we incorporate that? And, and how do we incorporate all of these steps in the process, especially with the limited amount of time that we seem to be up against? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I, I think if I've seen it done both ways. I've seen going and gathering information first, and then I've seen presenting maps first. Um, in Riverside, that's what what has happened is the, the commission basically, or the supervisors presented maps, uh, but there was immediate blowback, particularly from the Latino population. Um, I don't think this situation would, you know, at all be the same. Um, but that's uh, that's something to 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 to, to think about. I, I think uh, your your average person, I guess, who doesn't look at shape files and maps all day long like I do, um, doesn't have this kind of stuff imprinted in their brain. And so sometimes showing them a set of maps and here are some options, and then receiving the responses that might be the best way to go here. So long as uh, the commission can kind of say, okay, these four maps seem reasonable. We have some. Okay, we're maybe going to disagree a bit but we generally can agree that this is potentially workable. The different uh, race and ethnic groups have you know, kind of like, you know, they're kind of areas and um, likely chances of winning and all of that kind of thing is taken to, into account. Um, that could possibly be the best way to go uh, in my experience. And then another uh, option would be at that point, people can either use existing software that they might have available. They can send that into us somehow. Uh, in terms of areas like we could actually present the shape files and give that out to the community. So of course not everyone's gonna be able to use that. So we'll have a PDF, but then we can export out kind of the GIS uh, files that sort of enough people know how to use that they, they could you know incorporate that into their software. And we could also, I could have someone help uh, kind of work with other community members who wanna physically go out and draw and change things and stuff like that, we could get that uploaded into my system. And then that could be up basically added on as a mapping layer into the existing software. Um, that can get a little crazy if there's too much. So we would have to kind of balance that, you know, maybe, you know, one per district or trusty area, uh, you know, so that's the kind of general way that I'm thinking about it. But I'm of course uh, happy to work with whatever people kind of want to, you know, whatever strategy people kind of collectively agree on. Question, comments from commissioners? Mr. Collinwood, um, thanks for your presentation and uh, giving us all that information. One question that comes to mind is whether um, you would be able to put up proposed maps, as you say, three, four, five, on the redistricting commission's website um, to allow members of the public to access the maps directly through the commission's website. Um, just because I think there remains a digital divide in some of these communities For where sure. people do not yeah. have computers. And the more we can centralize access to these um, potential maps would be better in terms of getting that feedback. And I would also have the same question for when we do this public outreach, whether we would have some tentative maps we can display um, I don't know if we would need to print up mock-ups or things like that, you know, um, to show the public, uh, just, you know, things like that to kind of have like the lo-fi um, way of getting these maps into people's hands in front of their eyes so that we can get their input. Thanks. 
Yeah, that, that's a, a great uh, set of collection uh, questions. I mean, yeah, down in, in Riverside County, I've been uh, working in areas that are, you know, uh, high density, foreign born populations, you know, low, low tech uh, access. And so um, that, that's definitely been a challenge. Um, and 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 for sure, we can post PDFs of the different districts. So in general, the way that it will work is, um, you know, you can have like a full kind of here's a full district uh, image, and you you've probably seen these. And then we can break them out into different districts. Um, and so each say potential map could have the main overall map, and then the, it, each trustee area a separate picture of that. And then uh, depending on the ability of uh, uploading onto that particular website, we could also upload the shape file. Um, that someone who's more high tech could do. And then in addition to some of these meetings, maybe not the very first one or two, um, but as we get going, I could create you know, various PowerPoint presentations that you could take with you. You could probably take those and just print that as well. Um, and so that should be able to streamline that process as well. Uh, if that makes um, you know, general, if that seems to work. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Other questions, comments from commissioners? Commissioner Lazaretti. Uh, just a couple uh, questions or thoughts. Um, and Mr. Pitts, maybe you can remind us, where do we stand on um, the timeline where we're supposed to have uh, the, uh, a new or a preliminary map um, to meet the requirements under the stipulated agreement? I know that's something that we weren't able to do meet um, the original deadline, but I'm curious, has there been any more updates in terms of where we are in terms of um, that question? And then Dr. Collingwood, do you have any thoughts about when you'll have uh, a preliminary map um, for us? So the, the, yeah, to answer the question, the timeline, there have, haven't been, uh, F, you know, there haven't been further developments in terms of modifying the stipulated injunction, injunctions deadlines uh, at this time. Um, so, as I said, I, we have we have said set a goal, or the commission set a goal last meeting of December fourteenth um, for adoption of a preliminary plan, um, and that then that would give us you know roughly, uh, and then we have a time for another little over a month of time for additional public feedback on that plan before getting to the recommended plan. Um, with the, the goal, as I said, of I think meeting the March 1st deadline, which is the most important deadline in my mind legally. Right. And uh, Dr. Collingwood, I was curious, yeah. how do you proceed? How do you vision between now and mid December kind of proceeding and putting together the preliminary map? And then I'm just curious also based on the Daddy, you've looked at so far. Do you have any sense about how significant the demographic changes have been in the district um, from the previous census? Yeah, the um, the main. Uh, I, I haven't had a chance to fully get in the weeds as much yet as I would want. So I'll ask answer that question first. I think the. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the what I've seen before is the the black CVAP district and one of the kind of mock-up maps I had seen was say 46% and what I'm seeing now is 43% there. Um, and the uh, the Latino population in that area, uh, I think it bumped up uh, somewhat. Um, so in general, I'm going to I have to double check, but it does look like the Latino population has grown a bit, but there's still quite a decent gap between that and the CVAP numbers in some of these critical areas. Um, in terms of a timeline, in terms of getting a maps, um, I'm going to shoot for uh, next Friday for, so the way that I tend to work the best is I'll probably come up with like one kind of core map to start with um, and then um, make sure it's kind of making sense by you know, internally with some folks and then um, kind of circulate that among maybe you all and then uh, maybe get some feedback there and then we can create the, uh, the other adaptations basically uh, to respond to that because, you know, again, I'm not, 
I'm not, I'm not from here like you are. So I'm a, I don't want to come in and make sure that I'm, you know, just doing something, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't make sense, right? That uh, visually might look like it makes sense, but you know, it doesn't. Um, so again, like usually we're, we're looking at roads, boundaries, natural barriers, um, highways, things like that. Um, and, uh, and, you know, because I've seen other maps here, I have a sense as to what's going on and what, you know, what makes sense. So um, I wish I could give you a slightly uh, better answer than that uh, at the moment, but- um, That's we'll perfect. Know a lot more soon, yeah. And, and the, I will add the note that the tentative schedule that was adopted last week provides for the next meeting, November 9th, for us to have a, um, a you know, a further update with some sort of considering some, not, you know, whether we have a map to talk about then, but just to think about, you know, start sort of looking at getting closer to the details of what, what may go into the preliminary plan options. Any further questions? Uh, concerns, comments from commissioners this evening. Great, we'll look forward and we um, to hearing some more and looking forward to the maps. We're starting the important work. It's um, finally happening, kind of <laughs> exciting. Yes. Um, and thank you, Dr. Collingwood, for your your update. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Would we? Would you like public comment on on this agenda item? I would. I um, is there public comment on this item? No public comment. Moving on then to item C, our update uh, for the area two vacancy. So we started off talking about this earlier in our um, in our public comment area, and we are having. Um, difficulties finding volunteers for the commission. Um, I think it's uh, an admirable thing that the people who are here are showing up consistently. Um, it's, it's a lot of time away from work and their families. So um, I just wanna again, acknowledge all of my fellow commissioners and their commitment towards um, serving the community in this capacity. So, um, Mr. Pitts, do you have any updates on the area two vacancy? There are no, I, there are no further updates uh, that remains unfilled. Um, my understanding is that, that there have not been further applications received. Um, outreach was made this afternoon to uh, Judge Henderson to uh, to determine whether the prior app, there was one prior applicant for the seat um, remains to ask Judge Henderson to reach out to determine if that person remains interest remains interested in the position and is able to devote the time that uh, that is required, as as Commissioner Gordon noted, uh, to that position. So that hopefully will be happening in the near future. Um, I also will, you know, having now had a discussion with the district about the public outreach options that are available through the district. Um, I if the commission you know, authorizes me to do so, I will, uh, I can reach out again to the district tomorrow to talk about um, further posting of, to, to request a further posting of the vacancy and various, some of the means that, that we've talked about using for advertising the public outreach meetings in the future um, that may be helpful in terms of, you know, at least do, trying to do another blitz immediately, I think, um, before we begin the public outreach process. Mm -hmm. Um, then I am willing to give um, my consensus on that um, outreach plan. Is there uh, other comments, um, com uh, consensus from other commissioners this evening? Yeah, I support Mr. Pitts doing whatever he can. Excellent. And I saw uh, Commissioner Lazaretti. How about Commissioner Tulu? You've got our direction to continue to go and um, work on the outreach for us. Thank you. Is there any other questions, com comments from commissioners? If not, we'll take public comment on this item. Seeing none, um, Ms. Forrest, is there public comment? No public comment. No public comment at this time. All right, moving on then to <clears throat> item seven. Our reports, updates, and future agenda items. 
We'll start with Commissioner Tulu this evening. Uh, no, no, nothing to report at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Hilliard. No updates from my district. Thanks. Commissioner Lazzaretti. Just a thought for a future agenda item as we're getting ready to host or getting set to hopefully start hosting some public meetings in the communities um, in the next, over the next month or so is, I think it would be good if we kind of discussed um, perhaps at our next meeting, um, how we want to uh, present our work to the community. Um, basically, you know, how we're, going to explain our role and the importance of our role and what it means uh, for them in terms of uh, how they vote for their elected representatives. Um, and so I think a lot of this is, you know, not necessarily well understood, um, the kind of the background, how we got here, why we have and have district elections, why we're doing new maps or maybe, you know, depending on if we're going to, um, you know, how we're going to modify the maps that currently exist. And so I think it would be good if when we have these community meetings, if we had, you know, like a very brief kind of like PowerPoint that we can present and maybe Mr. Pitts and Mr. Collingwood could, uh, or Dr. Collingwood could collaborate on that we can kind of explain what the role of a redistricting commission is and what we're hoping to accomplish and how this affects, you know, the way they will be electing their representatives. Um, so not just a thought in terms of uh, perhaps an agenda item about how we want to communicate, really looking at the communication end of how we're going to reach out to the public and explain our role. Awesome. And, um... I think we're probably going to have to have that conversation a little bit sooner than November 9th because November 9th will be an outreach meeting. Um, I, and I think we need to probably assign the um, subcommittee that we have in outreach, um, not only about the communication piece, but the logistics piece. I think that we are supposed to provide some um, food <laughs> and um, other, um, other logistics things. So perhaps... Um, Mr. Pitts, you and I and, and Omar, uh, Mr. Commissioner Butler can can get a um, outreach meeting going on um, to uh, kind of nail down some of these logistics as well as a communication piece. Commissioner Hilliard. Yeah, really quick. Um, will we be reminding the public that um, these public meetings will be done in accordance with the state COVID-19 guidelines? Um, because if we are having sick, you know, we're planning for a good turnout, I'm, ex I'm hoping, um, but just so that everyone coming knows what the rules are. Um, That's an excellent point. I believe we will put that down. We will follow the um, county uh, guidelines for COVID and we will be um, expecting um, others to follow suit as well. And we, we should be aware of the amount I have been, um, I have a lot of um, connections with community, um, not only community college, but with K-12 and the number of folks that are showing up to K-12 and County Office of Ed um, board meetings that are not following the COVID guidelines and protesting. And again, this is not our jurisdiction. The county health ordinances are passed down to us by the county and we must follow them and so must they. So I think that is an excellent point and something that we will put down underneath our communications piece of the outreach. Are there any other um, logistics, communication, COVID um, procedures, anything that we need to put on for our, um, our reports this evening? Just to piggyback on um, what Trustee Hilliard was referencing, um, if we are going to have food at these events, I think um, my understanding is that with the current regulations, 
uh, there needs to be proof of vaccination or um, a negative COVID test. Um, so just something to keep in mind. I think if, if there is no food requirement is masking, um, but if there is food, I think it's the vaccination okay. element. So that might, we might have to, you know, think about the logistics of how to, how to handle that. Excellent point. All right, we have our list then for our item seven. Um, item eight, future uh, meetings. We think we've set those forward in our um, item six um, that we gave consensus on for our next meetings. And so if there is no more further business of the commission this evening, I will move on to item nine for adjournment. Is there any other business this evening? Any other community input or uh, community um, comment this evening, Ms. Foster, Ms. Forrest? Public comment? No public comment, sorry. Awesome. I move that we adjourn the meeting and so be it, our meeting's adjourned. Thank you everyone for attending. Our next Thank meeting you. will be no November 9th and we'll get to you back on the um, logistics piece. Thank you, everyone.